What's up everybody, JJ here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build an addressable LED RGB logo. A lot of these same techniques will work on many DIY projects. This is a great way to make cheap, controllable LED lights that you can control straight from your phone. Pretty cool, right? We're going to be using the WLED open source software from GitHub. I will link it all down below. I did not create this software, so all credit goes to the creator of that. But it is open source software, so that's what I chose to use on this project, and you can use it on your own projects. But before we start building this, let me show you some of the equipment you're going to need to order to start on this project. So now for the equipment of what you're going to need, and it's all quite simple. First, let's start with the brains of the operation. This is an ESP... 8266 module. And this is made by so many different companies. I'll put a couple links down below. They're super inexpensive and they have built-in Wi-Fi on there. So it's super good for connected little projects around the house. I'll put some links to Amazon down below. That won't be the cheapest you can find. If you order them directly off of eBay or AliExpress, you can find them for cheaper, but you might have to wait longer for them to arrive. So depending on how long you want to wait for them, me, I'll usually buy a bulk order of them from eBay to get them really cheap. Go ahead and buy like 10 at a time. It's not like fresh produce. These aren't gonna go bad sitting on a shelf. If you keep them in an anti-static bag, they'll last a good long while. And after you have your brain, the next thing you need is addressable LED strips. These are by BF Lighting. Also ordered these off Amazon, but you can find very similar ones off eBay for cheaper, but similar, it's gonna take longer for it to get there. This is one meter long and has 144 LEDs in there, so there's not much of a gap between each of the LEDs. That will look really good in the final product because I'm gonna be putting it on a fairly small object, but if you're doing this on a much larger object, like for example, if I was framing out this entire pegboard behind me, you would probably want more spacing between the LEDs. That's gonna be a lot cheaper because you're really paying per LED, so you can get much longer ones that still have 144 LEDs on them for about the same price. The next thing you're gonna to need to think about is power. I'm just gonna be using a USB power supply because luckily these ESP8266 boards have voltage pass-through. So the voltage that comes in through USB can be passed straight through into your LED strip. Now this only works because I'm not using too many LEDs. If you're connecting several of these LED strips together, you're probably gonna need an external power supply. And I'm also using a pretty good power brick over here that can supply plenty of amps for this project. And the last thing you'll need for this project is something to mount them to. I'm gonna be doing this. This is a 3D print I printed of the logo of this channel. It's also my name, but I printed it with a solid filament color and then it's hollow but with transparent filament around the edges. The LEDs around the outside track and it'll shine through. It'll look really good through all this transparency. And that about wraps it up for items you'll need specific to this project. There are some other objects you'll probably need. We'll probably need some wires, hot glue gun, soldering iron, but those are pretty generic for any project you do. You'll need those. And these are more specific to this project. Now the first thing to do is we gotta flash the firmware on here and then we can start wiring it all up. So now we're gonna be dealing with flashing the firmware on your ESP8266. It's a lot of numbers I keep forgetting. In the description down below, I'll link to the GitHub where you can get the, all the firmware you need. And they also have a great wiki where they explain some of the steps, but I'm gonna take you through what I used and it's really simple. First, you're gonna need a different piece of software called NodeMCU dash pi flasher. That will also be linked in the description down below. Get the latest version and download the .exe. Windows might try to protect your PC by not allowing it to open. Just click more info, run anyway. This is just a really streamlined way of flashing firmware. There's a lot of other IDEs you could use, but this one is probably the most simple. Then go back to the WLED GitHub Huge shout out again, can't thank you enough to Air Cookie and anyone else who's worked on this. It's just amazing software. On WLED, go to the releases and I would just download the most recent one that's on there. Click assets, go to the ESP8266.bin. This is an 8266 board and you need the binary file that will flash to here. Save it somewhere and then reopen NodeMCU Pi Flasher. The first thing you notice is serial port. For that, we will need to plug in our Node MCU. One way to know which serial port is your Node MCU is to click that drop down and see what shows up for you. And then when you plug in your Node MCU, you may have to hit the reload button, but now COM3 has shown up. So that means COM port 3 is for the device. Node MCU firmware, hit browse, 
and go to where you saved it to. Everything else you can leave pretty much standard what's here then hit flash node MCU oh, and it will run through and flash it onto here. It could take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute to, for this to upload. At the end if it says firmware successfully flashed then it can say other things after that. But that means you are done and ready to unplug. You can just unplug it like that. And now it's ready to start controlling some LEDs. So now that we have the firmware successfully flashed to our module, it would probably be good to test it out first to make sure everything's working as it should. So I've got a little segment of the LED strips here. I cut it because I was already starting to wire up the other section, but then I thought it probably would be best if we go ahead and test this one out. So on the end, we've got three wires here, and it is important with addressable LEDs that you put the data coming in the correct direction. There's a little arrow next to every LED to show the flow of data, so make sure you hook up data to this side and not this side. I put some jumpers on the end of those, and we're going to go ahead and wire it up to the module. Put power onto VN, ground on any ground wire here. There's several pins around the board that are ground wires, so you can use any of those. The data is important that you put it on D4. That's just the default for this firmware, and later on, if you wanted more LED strips, you could use all the D pins to control your data going to different LED strips. Now all there is is to hook it up, see if we can get this to turn on. Just a micro USB cable, plug it straight in. Haha! -ha, there we go. Well, we got every LED lit up, so that means there's enough power to control at least this much. So let's now go into the app and see what we can control. Now go ahead and open the WLED app. I already have the LED configured here, but if you haven't set it up yet, hit the plus in the top right, hit discover lights. It will say something like this, hit the plus in the top right, and your module will show up right there. This is a little quick window where we can turn the lights off or back on and control the brightness of them. But in here, there's so many different colors you can control. There's a full color wheel. You can set any of these colors you want. The first thing to do once you open the app will be to go into the configuration, go into LED preferences, and fill this out. First, put in the total LED count. With this, I do have 44, so I'll leave it as that. You can go down and set your current limit, what current you want for each LED. For your LED strip in the middle of the screen, you can select what type of LED strip this is. This is a WS2812, and so we'll select the first one. The color here is GRB. This one, change it if your colors aren't turning out correct. You won't damage the LED strip by changing this setting incorrectly. You will, you will just get some weird color output. Pin, this is the IO pin that you've connected to. So pin two is D4 on the board. Here you can change things like reversing it. This works for some of the effects. They look like they should be reversed. Instead of having to change it with the hardware, you can just change it in the software here. And several other settings, but those aren't important for a simple project like this. My favorite part of this are the effects that come with it. This gives me so many fun ideas of projects to do. This one's a really fun one. Makes it look like it's dripping down. These are really fun. This is like fireworks. So it looks like it launches it up and it explodes out. But now that the proof of concept works with this test hardware, it's time to hook it up to the real thing. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is cut the correct length of wire and then we're gonna hot glue it in. So I just plug the hot glue gun in and it's gonna be heating up over here while we measure out the correct length of wire. So I'm gonna do all my wire management over here at the top of the J because there's a little bit of room. Then the LEDs are going to run around this outside channel. And when you cut through these, Make sure you leave a little bit of the pad on both sides. That way you can solder to it later. I got the soldering iron nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin these wires and then I'll go ahead and put the whole wire before I try to hot glue them into the case. Now we got a little dab on each one. Now I've got my three wires here, positive, ground, and data. Strip off just a little bit at the end. It will help if you pre-tin your wires so just take the wires, add a little dab of solder to them, heat them up, put a dab of solder. Now these are pretend, it should be really easy to just solder them right to the wire. After you're done, give each wire a little tug just to make sure they're securely in place. And while we've got the soldering iron hot, let's go ahead and solder the other side. Strip them down, you really don't need much wire sticking out on the end. And then pre-solder these as well.
and then flip it over to get to D4. As always, give these a little bit of a tug to make sure they're not gonna come loose. Just using some scissors to hold the board straight. Give it a little tug again, make sure it's not coming off. And that is all wired up. I'm gonna take a little bit of electric tape to cover all the pins, kind of hold things together. It's just a little bit of strain relief for these wires. Later on, I might print a case for this, but for now, this will work fine. Now it's time to do the hot gluing portion of this project. Now there's a lot of different glues you could use here. You could use super glue, for example. I'm using hot glue because it is reversible. If you use super glue, it will probably damage the LEDs to try to remove them later. And since this is just my YouTube channel's logo and I might change that in the future, I want the possibility that I could remove these LED strips later. So I think hot glue will work just fine for this. Now that the wiring's all in place and the hot glue is done, it's time for a little test. Haha, -ha, it works! This looks amazing. But wait, let's get this up on the wall, get the lights out. Let's do a real reveal. And now that it's done, it looks even better in person than I thought it would. I hope the video really captures how amazing it looks. All the reflections and glowing in there. And it's just such an interesting pop of color here in the background. But it doesn't have to be such an extreme pop of color. I can easily change it to just a solid color. And I can adjust that color to anything I want here on the desk. Super easy to change since there's a built-in app. Huge shout out to all the developers of WLED that have worked on it. it it works so well, and having a built-in app makes it so easy to control. Instead of having to recompile it every time you want to upload new code, you can just control it straight from this, which is amazing for open source software to have such user-friendly controls. But let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about creating this project, or if you use any of my tips to create your own sort of projects, let me know about it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. But anyway, that wraps it up for this project. Go out there and make something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.